Okay, uh, hello everybody. My name is Alexander Pan. Uh, I'm an MBS developer at ETMIS. Um, some of you may know me as one of the core uh, maintainers of our platforms, MPS extensions, Embedded Core, and IT3 open source. So if you're not familiar with those uh, projects, I would uh, recommend uh, checking them out. Uh, and today I want to show you how you can embed a Chrome-based browser uh, into MPS. So let's get started. So one problem then that I'm sometimes having is uh, I want to, to include some, for example, web-based uh, content uh, in the editor, or maybe some interactive content like a diagram. And uh, for me, it's, uh, it's quite uh, difficult to do. I've, I've tried to, to create my own editor cell so, I can, so that I can use some HTML code. Um, but for me, that's uh, not the solution. And there is one solution that works quite well for me, and that is to use the Java Chromium Embedded Framework, or for short, uh, JCF, or let's just call it JCF. Um, it just sounds better to me. So uh, the, the, the JCF is uh, included in the JetBrains runtime environment. So this is the Java environment that's uh, uh, included in, in MPS. And you all know uh, Chromium. Uh, this is the primary code base um, that powers uh, Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, for example. And that means we have a full-fetched uh, browser, browser that we can uh, include in any Java application. Uh, so now for me, the, the question is, how do we communicate with this web browser? So I, I came up with uh, two solutions. Uh, the first one is uh, something specific to JSF. Um, so you can send some uh, JavaScript code uh, from the Java site to the web browser and, and vice versa. And I've also uh, used the, the WebSocket protocol for the communication. So if you're not uh, familiar with, with, the, with WebSockets, I can uh, quickly explain um, how this works. So you have a, a client and uh, you have a server. Uh, the client uh, sends a handshake, handshake to the server. So this is an HTTP request. And this HTTP request gets upgraded uh, to a WebSocket um, uh, connection. And now you have an open and persistent connection uh, where you can send uh, messages uh, from the Java site uh, to the browser and vice versa until one site uh, closes uh, the channel. Then also the connection is closed. So I, before I show you the demo, I want to um, tell you what's included in, in the demo. So I've, I've tried to keep the demo quite uh, simple. So we have a, a simple web application uh, that's uh, using the JavaScript diagramming library joint.js, uh, which can be used for showing diagrams. And we have just a basic web application. We have some HTML code, some CSS code, some JavaScript. And we are bundling the, the web application uh, with the bundle web uh, pack. So we have just one um, HTML file uh, that we include uh, in, in the browser that we want to show. So now on, on the Java side, uh, we, of course, need to um, include the, the browser. So we have a Java Swing component for embedding this uh, uh, JSF into MPS. And uh, you, you may be already uh, familiar with, with Swing components if you're a Java developer, or maybe uh, you have created an MPS editor uh, where you are using a Java button, um, because then you are using a Swing, swing cell to, to include this uh, button. And I've also included some support for caching those browser instances. And I will explain a bit later uh, why this is uh, necessary. So let's talk a bit about the communication with the browser. I've already told you I've implemented two ways how you can uh, communicate with the browser, with uh, JavaScript and with WebSockets. And the way I've uh, implemented it in this demo, it's very similar to, to a message bus. So you have a subscribe method and a, and a post method. And you can send uh, message, messages both ways, from, uh, from the Java side to the browser and, and vice versa. And for, for this demo, I've uh, split up uh, the, the repository uh, into two branches. So th there's uh, the master branch, uh, which includes the communication with, the, uh, with JavaScript and WebSockets. 
And there's also a WebSockets only branch, uh, which only contains the WebSocket uh, communication. And that's the one that I'm showing you uh, today. So how exactly can we use WebSockets? So if, if you have an, a normal web application, they can already act as a WebSocket client. So that means we also need a, a server that supports WebSockets. And I have uh, created a very simple WebSocket server in, in MPS that's started in MPS. Uh, it uses the, the Netty um, uh, uh, server client framework. And it supports uh, handling and sending messages. And you can also broadcast uh, messages to all connected clients. So let's switch to the demo itself. So I hope you can see it, yes. So we have a, a very uh, simple uh, language uh, for describing graphs. Uh, we have some, some nodes, and, and there can be some edges between those nodes. And on the left side, uh, you can see the textual form of this model. And on the right side, uh, you can see a diagram. So everything starting from the minimal JSF version 0.2 header uh, downwards uh, is, the, is the browser, the embedded browser. And yeah, so for example, now if I make a change in the model and I load the, the MPS data, um, let's try this again. Hmm. Seems like there's some, some issue at the moment, but normally the, 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 the diagram uh, would, would update. And uh, you can also do some, some, some other stuff, uh, stuff like uh, create an MPS error, but I think there's currently some, some issue. So let's try to, to open this again. Yes, now it works. Um, you can you can load the, the, the data uh, from the model. Uh, you can also send events uh, to MPS. So for example, if you want to uh, create a notification, or you can of course send any uh, events that you that you want. Uh, you can also load, for example, here some some local um, data. And there are some buttons here in this demo that are quite useful for debugging. So you can also use the uh, dev tools of Chrome for some debugging. And you can also reload the, the application. And as you can see, this is a, it's a, it's an interactive um, web application. And yeah, there's, there's not really much to, 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 to say about this. Um, you can, of course, load any web application uh, that you uh, want. So let's go back to the presentation. Um, oh, I forgot to, to show you something. Um, of course, you can also uh, open the, the same uh, web application also in the web browser. Um, here, you um, don't have that many uh, buttons. I can uh, explain you why. Um, here, I can only uh, load a specific uh, MPS, uh, a, a specific node. And uh, I want to quickly uh, explain you how all of this, this works. Um, so when you, when you click this, this button here, for example, the, the load MPS data button, um, an event is uh, created. And uh, the MPS site is subscribed to, to this, to the, to this uh, topic. And the, the graph gets uh, generated in, into JSON data. And this data is uh, sent to the, to the web browser uh, via WebSockets in, in this case. And um, uh, first of all, the question is, of course, uh, how, how, how does the, the, the browser know uh, what uh, data we, we want to uh, show. So this is uh, qu quite simple. We just send a, a browser, uh, so a unique ID to, to the browser instance. And um, so, so that we can make a correlation between uh, the browser instance and the editor component. 
So we just look up the, the, the editor component when we are receiving the, the browser ID, and then we know which uh, data we want to send. And uh, the, the sending of the data works basically like, like this. We, we create an event with some uh, payload, payload, for example. Uh, this could be, for example, some node ID or something else. And we uh, serialize uh, this event to a string and, and, and send it via WebSockets. And on the other uh, side, for example, uh, on, on the Java side or in, in, in the web browser, we deserialize uh, the string. And then uh, in the browser, we have a JSON object uh, where we have the, the, the data that we received from the, M from the MPS side. And we can display it in the diagram. And uh, as you can see here in, in the web browser itself, uh, we, we don't have that many buttons uh, because we, we, we don't know which uh, node the, the web application wants to show. So we can just uh, request uh, specific nodes that we, that we want to, to show. Okay, so uh, while I was implementing this, this demo, the, there were uh, quite a few uh, challenging uh, things that I had to, to overcome. Uh, the first one is the size calculation of, of, of the browser window. So it's, it's not quite uh, clear sometimes how big uh, the browser window should be. And the, the way I've implemented this is that the, the web application uh, gets, uh, so that the, uh, the, the diagram gets rendered in, in, the, in, the, in this browser. And then the browser sends the, the size of the, of the browser window uh, to the Java side and resizes the component. And I'm, I'm not sure if, if this is really the, the, the best solution uh, for this. And for me, it's also a question how a full screen mode would uh, work. Uh, for, for such uh, browsers. Uh, the next big challenge uh, was to integrate uh, those browser instances into the MPS editor lifecycle. Because as you may know, uh, the editor gets uh, reloaded uh, many times. Um, for example, if, if you reopen a project, open a new project, or in, in, in this case, I've, I, I'm not sure if you could see the, in, in the demo, uh, every time you, you type something in the model, uh, the, the, uh, the diagrams get also updated, or in this case, the, the full browser instance gets reloaded. So it was necessary to, to cache all those uh, browser instances. And the browser instances are, are cached per editor component. So, so you can have uh, multiple uh, browsers uh, uh, per, per editor, and this improved uh, the, the situation a lot. Um, but I, I think it's still not not perfect uh, because there's still too much uh, reloading, and uh, there were also some 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 class loading uh, issues. So when you uh, reload uh, some some modules, for for example. Um, it, it was quite uh, challenging to dispose the, the browser instances correctly. But I think this is, this is something that I, I was able to, to, to solve. Uh, the next question is, um, so when you have a, a browser uh, you, and, and the, the content is quite big, then you also need scroll bars. Um, but you all, all already have scroll bars for the, for the edit, editor component. So what can happen is that you have two scroll bars in the, in the editor, and this is something that you, of course, don't want. So in, in the demo, I, I decided that uh, I don't want any scroll bars uh, in, 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 the web, in the embedded browser and just uh, uh, send the, the events to, to, the, to the MPS editor so that I just have uh, one scroll bar. Uh, there's, a, there's another issue that uh, I couldn't uh, fix. Uh, I think you couldn't see it in, in the demo. Um, but there's some, some, some overlapping of, of the browser with the scroll bar of the, of the editor component. And I'm, I'm not quite sure why this happens, uh, but this is uh, currently an unsolved uh, issue. And something that I also had to, to do is to disable a, a lot of the browser functionalities that we just don't need. Um, because there are, there are a lot of things, as I said, this is a full-fledged browser. So, so you have uh, things like uh, the printing shortcut, the, the right mouse click, and 
if if the if the user is, is smart, he even manages uh, to uh, load a different uh, website, and this is of course something that we don't want. So um, it's quite ch challenging to, to to find all the the shortcuts on all the, the things uh, from the browser that we don't really need. So of course I have uh, some ideas for improvements. Uh, as I said before, um, I've, I've tried to to keep the the demo quite quite simple. So if you want to 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 use this in in your own projects, uh, it's really just the bare bone bone stuff. So, so um, that, that's why I've I've uh, I've didn't include uh, some features that I would have liked to, to include. Um, so the first one, of course, is the, the automatic updating uh, of the browser or in this demo uh, the diagram when the model changes. Um, this is something that uh, could be um, solved quite easily. Uh, for example, in MPS extensions, uh, we have model listeners. Model listeners. So when the model changes, we can just um, update uh, the diagrams. Uh, another thing that I think could be improved is uh, the, the communication um, of the web application uh, when it's not used inside MPS. And I, I think this could be solved by some of the other projects uh, that are presented uh, today, for example, by, by Modelix. So you can, can use Modelix, for example, to uh, query uh, the MPS models um, or maybe also uh, change them. And I think it, it would be also uh, quite beneficial to create a custom uh, language to, to simplify the embedding of those browsers. I can actually uh, show you how this works right now. Um, it's, it's not that uh, much code if you want to do this uh, yourself. So here you can, can see the, the, this, this solution here. Um, you have a simple browser. And you, you basically have a, a handler uh, for, for all of the, the events uh, that you can receive. Um, but I think this could be, of course, uh, improved uh, by creating a, a custom language for that. Yes. Um, and I, I didn't really experiment with embedding the, the browser into MPLS S tool windows. So, so currently, uh, I display it directly in the editor. Uh, I've, I think there are some people here that ha have tried this, and uh, it, it's a lot easier um, because you you don't have to to deal with the with the editor uh, lifecycle, for example. And um, yes, uh, you, you you just have have this uh, swing component that you can display in in, in the tool window. And yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot easier. And, and I've, I've seen it in, in a few projects. This also uh, works uh, quite uh, nicely. So and another improvement uh, for this specific demo is, for example, if you uh, track some elements in the diagram, uh, you want to save the position of those elements. And one solution would be to save uh, this information directly uh, in the model. And this is something that we have already uh, solved, for example, in MPS ex extensions in the diagram language, uh, where we just uh, save the, the layout uh, data uh, um, of those diagrams as node attributes. And this is something that uh, works uh, quite uh, nicely uh, uh, for us. I, I, I didn't uh, include it in, in the demo because, as I said before, I've, I've tried to, to keep it uh, quite simple. So now I also have some some uh, additional uh, links here. If you are um, interested in in those uh, topics that I've uh, just just mentioned, so the first link uh, is a, is a link to the GitHub repository where um, um uh, where this uh, demo is is hosted. Uh, so you need MPS uh, 2022.2 to, to to run it, uh, but you can also run it with a new MPS version. Uh, something that you always have to, to keep in mind is that you need to, to, to use the, the, the Chatman's runtime environment to, to, to run this, uh, because JSF is, is only included in the, in the Chatman's runtime environment, not in, uh, in, an, in a standard uh, Java runtime environment. And there, there are also some, some classes uh, for JSF uh, that come from the, from the uh, Chatman's uh, platform. 
um, but it's, it, it, it's actually uh, quite quite easy to to, to, to use this in, in, in MPS. So so you've seen in, in, in this demo um, to to include it uh, into the, the editor. But if, if you just want to to, to to use it, for example, in, in a tool window, and you just want to display, for example, some some uh, static file, or uh, maybe you, you you generate some some code on, and, and want to, to to show it in, into in, in the tool window. Uh, you just need uh, three lines of, of, of code, and, and that's basically it. So it's really uh, quite quite easy to uh, include. Uh, but as I said before, it's a bit more difficult if you want to include it in the editor um, because of those issues like the, the class loading issues, the, the other issues with the scrollbars and, and so forth. Um, I've included here some, 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 some more um, documentation so the, the second one is some additional uh, um, some, some additional information that I, I wrote about uh, this this topic. Um, the, the third link uh, is some documentation uh, in the IntelliJ platform um, plugin SDK, where, where there's also some information um, how to 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 in include uh, JSF uh, into Java applications and what's what's the the minimal uh, version. Um, where you can, can, can use this, the, the minimal uh, Java version or the minimal version of the IntelliJ platform, I think. And I've also uh, in, included some, some links um, when, uh, where, where you can, can see how to, to write your, your own uh, server to, to handle uh, WebSockets. So, so at the moment, uh, this is a, an a MPS uh, plugin that's uh, just uh, started. Uh, when you uh, when you open the the, the uh, MPS, and uh, it's also quite quite easy to to, to write, and there, there's actually quite a lot of things that you could do that, that I haven't uh, done in this in this demo, uh, especially the, the WebSocket uh, server uh, supports, for example, uh, text message, uh, text messages, uh, but also binary. Uh, messages. So, if you want to to use um, the bi a binary format for the communication, this also works. And uh, especially the, the the web browser has uh, support for for a lot of uh, features uh, that I I, I didn't uh, use. Um, so, so normally, if you want to load uh, a local uh, a, a local file like an HTML file or some JavaScript files. Uh, you don't need any uh, specific uh, permissions, uh, but you could also uh, support some uh, custom um, uh, protocols if you uh, want to load some, some other uh, files, maybe. And uh, especially here for, for documentation, uh, what's quite interesting is that there's not that much information on, on, on the web about this, this topic. Uh, you can can find uh, some information, but I've, I've tried to, to, to write down uh, a few of the things that, that, that I've noticed are, are quite important. Um, what's quite interesting uh, for me is uh, that uh, in IntelliJ project, projects, um, you, you, you're maybe familiar with, with the Markdown preview. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if this is one of the, the plugins that's bundled uh, with, with IntelliJ uh, projects. But it, it also uses um, uh, JSF, and uh, as we can see there, this uh, works uh, quite well. And I, I think this is, was maybe for me also one of the main uh, motivations uh, why I've, 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 I've tried this. Um, so are there, uh, are there any questions um, so far? I'm not sure about the, about the, the time. Yes. Thanks. That uh, looks cool what you did. Uh, I don't know if this question makes sense, but uh, could this leverage the Lion Web stuff, given its integration between some components, or is that does that even make sense? Well, I think it, it, we, we, we could integrate it. Yes. I think it should be possible, and uh, th this is something. Uh, so for the for the communication, um, I, I have Im implemented two two different ways to do this. As I said before, the the, the communication via JavaScript, 
and, and also via web sockets, but you could use also some, some other communication protocol if, if you want to. So I, th I think this should be uh, definitely pos possible to, to integrate it with some other platforms or tools or something like, like the, the, the project from the previous talk. Yes. So I understood you can uh, have more than one uh, browser in the same editor? Yes. Um, how is this resource-wise? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this is something that I uh, didn't uh, really uh, try. Um, I, I fear that the performance is probably not that great. Um, but yeah, th this is something that I, I haven't um, tried. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure if this is really something that you, that you want, because if, I think in most cases, you, uh, one, one browser instance should be enough, I would say. Yeah, the use case I could think about is I use a HTML rich text editor, essentially. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just like edit, editing the description of something. And I could have a lot of nodes which have a description, right? So each of the nodes would have its own browser with its own rich text editor. If each of them takes 50 meg memory, that's okay. If it takes 500. Uh... For, for, for me, it's the, the, the question, uh, when exactly you, you need a, a full fetch browser? Because uh, something that, that, that I've tried is to just uh, create a custom HTML uh, cell um, where you have support for some of the, the basic uh, HTML tags, like for example, italic text or bold text or something like that. And I think for, for, for many use cases, this also should be enough. So, so if you really have issues with the performance, I would rather try this HTML cell first and, and then try the, the process. But I, I definitely agree that there are probably some performance issues if you're using multiple instances in the same editor. Yeah. 